Hello and welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. The 3D box tool, which is this icon here, has been my nemesis for years. I've struggled with it and I still do to this very day, getting some awful messes um, when I should have had something reasonably neat like one of these diagrams. Now I've since looked up some settings to try and uh, simplify things that can perhaps help get us out of trouble when we uh, get into a a tangled mess with this tool as will probably happen during this video at some point otherwise I'll uh, append a, a short video I made a while ago showing just a, a terrible mess. Anyway, let's uh, get on with it and start with an isometric projection. Now I'll use the 3D box tool and just drag out uh, a shape. You can try dragging around and that's not too bad. That's, uh, that's looking pretty good actually as a uh, an isometric projection as we call it. Now just if we click on the box again just want to show you the settings if you do get into trouble and you want this sort of diagram the three parallel lines all are highlighted uh, which mean you can actually set the angles of the um, infinity vanishing points. Now the X is the red, the Y is the blue, the yellow which is very hard to see off here to the right that's the Z. So with these parallel lines highlighted uh, we, can't, um, we can adjust the angles of the perspectives uh, but uh, we can't do it on the actual screen, we can only do it up here. You can drag these points to change the uh, shape and that's very very handy and a nice simple use of the perspective tool. So I'll leave that one, in fact I'll delete it Actually, I don't know why I deleted it. I should have left it there, but I'll start again and you know, press the right and up or whatever. And what I'm going to do now is one point perspective and with the tool highlighted, the 3D box tool, I'm going to highlight uh, the parallel lines and set X to 180. Enter and I'm going to highlight the parallel lines for Y or leave it highlighted and make that 90 which it is and I'm going to take off the parallel lines for the Z and what that means is I've got one point here, the one that the parallel is taken off that I can control the perspective of and it's way up here, it's the yellow line, I'll drag it down here and you can see the effect of you know, where we're heading off to infinity. So there's one point perspective, sometimes it's a bit hard to see this, these yellow lines uh, but it's the one we can control. So there's one point perspective. The two point perspective, I'll leave this here and just adjust the settings. We take off the parallel lines for the X and for the Y we leave it on at 90 and we take it off for the Z. So that's what we've got here. I can drag, whoops, I've started to do another 3D object, Control Z. Let's click on the, the one and you can adjust that there. Maybe this one down here, you adjust out. Uh, if I want to scale it up, click on the selection tool, Control Shift Enter, and back to the 3D box tool. And you can see there's, it's way off the page there, but uh, I can drag that point up to on the page if I prefer. Uh, same with this one, I can drag it back a bit but I can't adjust the blue ones there stuck on um, 90, uh, well not stuck, they're stuck on parallel I can change them from 90 by adjusting this but uh, I find that uh, not too helpful over there, I like to stick with the more conventional 90 degrees I'll have to type it in now, it's not letting me get exactly there with the spinners OK, click away and there we have it so that's the two-point perspective. One other thing I should show you, and I'll uh, start drawing something with the perspective box. Not sure what settings it'll have, depends on what I've done last. If you just click and drag, okay, just uh, stop when you've got something that looks anything like a box. But uh, if I go back to the uh, perspective box, 3D box settings, with only the middle parallel highlighted, that's the setting for it means two other points it can be vanishing points, so it's two point perspective. The blue lines are vertical, that's usually good, but uh, if I just scroll out, 
bit hard to see the yellow ones here they are. Here's the, um, the edge of the page. I like to drag them up uh, round about there. Red on the left. And, whoops, Control Z. Click on the box again. You've got to be very accurate grabbing these nodes. They don't highlight when they're grabbed. So you can uh, you know, drag up something like that. But if you want to move the whole thing down, you this cross in the middle and you can drag that down to there. You can see that that's quite effective. You know, so, um, yeah. The other thing I didn't show yet is these nodes here. They can be used to drag along towards one of the perspective lines and the other lines adjust accordingly. This one again would go towards the line it's pointing to. So here's some in interesting extra controls that you've got uh, using the 3D box tools. I wouldn't use three point too much unless I was trying to do a you know, cityscape or something with some quite tall objects but I'll show you anyway for the sake of completeness. What we do is uh, again we've highlighted, click the 3D box tool and we want um, the parallelness toggled off on all of them. Uh -huh, and you can see now I've got a bit of a mess. Control to zoom out. What on earth is that? An absolute horrible mess. I told you that would happen. So what you do if that ever happens is click on it and delete and start again. 3D box tool and it seems to repair itself to some extent. Now I've got uh, more control up here. I'll drag that you know, wherever you, you want to. That's uh, one vanishing point. Here's another. And here, oops, I've started another one. Control Z. Click on it. The box tool. Done it again. You click right on it. You're going to be accurate. And that's actually a three point perspective drawing there. So, having done all that, there are other things you can do. If you continue and uh, click on the tool for a new object, it uh, has the same vanishing points. Uh, they share, share those. I can click on that one or that object. You can see that they have the same vanishing points but the lines will be different because they're coming from different objects and uh, that can sometimes be helpful if you want to line a whole lot of things up in a diagram with consistent vanishing points but um, if you want to just turn it into an object that you're more comfortable with it's actually a grouping if we control U to ungroup it that automatically takes away the box like characteristics that can be operated on with this tool for example now if I click on any of this it's just an ordinary face same with that one and uh, even if I go back into a sort of a group in there select the whole lot and select the, the perspective box tool nothing happens it's been unperspectived or whatever the term is the 3D box tool will not uh, operate on it now if you want to control G to group it you can do that but it oops control Z of the 3D box with the selection tool you can move it around 3D box tool, it's not showing the perspective lines. So if you want to turn it into an ordinary object, you can do that. I'll control ungroup again and just show you that you can click on a face and give it a different colour, for example, and uh, you know, operate uh, independently like that. But it's just a drawing object now, we can't adjust the perspective. But uh, that may be what you want. But anyway, there's a summary of the three methods. Now I have got, uh, when I was practicing, these are three documents summarizing one point perspective, the settings here, and also two point perspective, the settings for that. You can get these off this video or from the documents that I'll leave a link to in the video description. There's three point perspective settings. The other one I started with was isometric projection. I'll zoom in on that. There are the settings for an isometric projection. But uh, you can't have different uh, types of projections in the one document, unfortunately. You have to just turn them into ordinary, ordinary objects that you can't edit with the 3D box tool. So um, I'll leave it at that. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me via the video description. And uh, until then, till next time, thanks for watching. Hope that helps.